You met March and you guys got married and started your family and you were at that time down on the farm. The, the, your mom ended up uh, when she she moved to Winnipeg, lived with Gertie for a while, right? Right. Okay. So you guys basically took over the farm after your dad died. No, he was still on the farm. Oh, he was time. still on the farm by then. Yeah. I wasn't quite sure of that because I don't didn't I couldn't quite find out how when he was born. But he he was the guy who was stooking when he was in almost 90, right? Yeah, on his 90th birthday I had a picture of him stooking a 10 acre field of oats. That is totally cool. Okay, so did he, did, did they live with you guys for a while then? Yeah. Okay. See, we uh, got married in 54 and my dad didn't die until 1962. Oh yeah, okay. All right, and then your kids were all born. You're all baseball players, going different directions, playing baseball. And you still farmed and you kept on with your music. Yeah. How did you guys do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, like I said, I was always shy and I wouldn't sing in the house if anybody was listening. So yeah. Mar Marge was all right. So there was a, a grave out behind our house. It's still there, I guess. Uh, a little bit of story in the Kaleida book, who it was. He, uh, that was his last wish to be buried. He lived on this farm or worked on it. Uh -huh. So that's where it was. So I used to go out and sit. There used to be a little picket fence around the grave. I used to go out there and sit beside that. <laughs> and sing there. Practice my yodeling and singing. Cool. I didn't think that I'd disturb him at all. But <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the guy's name? Uh, I don't offhand, it's in the, say, it's in the club, I don't okay. know what his name was. But. So you started touring, uh, all, or rather formally, like what, in the early 70s or already in the 60s? Oh, before that, uh, back in the 50s we had a, a band, uh, Lauren Snyder, Johnny Giesbrecht, Lori Lee. Mm -hmm. Marge wasn't, didn't play with us for a little while because uh, you know, kids were small and, mm -hmm. and she joined with us a little later on. What was it called? I think Stu Clayton and the Trail Riders. Okay. And where all did you guys tour for that? with that? Oh, we went up as far as uh, uh, Swan River. Gilbert Plains, St. Rose, up through that part of the country. Yeah, would you have just one gig and come back, or oh, was yeah, this a yeah. tour? No, not, 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 no, a not that. No, not that. This is the long road. Yes, that's for sure. And the cars weren't as new then as they are now. No. I remember one time that I was driving, and Winston Simpson was with us. Came around a bend in the road. It was on the highway going back to St. Rose or somewhere up north. I'm around this bend and there's a herd of cattle right across the highway. Oh no. And we were going along pretty fast, 55, 60 mile an hour. And uh, it was no distance between them, so I didn't know what to do. So I, uh, I headed right from the middle. There was a couple of, a little bit of an opening there. And for some unknown reason, the cows decided to keep them meandering and they split and went right through that herd. Oh, <laughs> this was probably, was this late at night or during the day? Oh, it was on our way there, so it would be, uh, well, maybe 8 o'clock at night. Oh. It was dark enough, but... Yeah. So you'd go up for a gig, you'd play, and then you'd come back basically in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah. Okay. Play till 12 or 1 o'clock. And pack up and head for home. Sometimes I get home and the sun was coming up. So at that time you were doing all the music for a community dance type thing, right? That'd be the kind of a context? Yeah. Okay. And at that time, uh, were, was it, were these socials or were these dry? How, how were they set up? Well, there was rodeo dances and okay. wedding dances, socials. and. Just basically the whole gamut. Yeah, whatever the 
whatever they wanted us for, they just hired us to play for a dance. Okay. Sometimes they didn't know what it was for, but... Right. Okay, so how long did you guys sing together? Well, Lori stayed with us for a lot of years. Uh, and Winston. And then when Ian Sutherland played with us, he got from Crystal City. Yeah. Lauren Snyder didn't play that long. He, his health wasn't good. And, mm -hmm. But the other ones, we kept playing that right up till, oh, I don't know, 20 years ago or so. Pretty steady. Mm -hmm. Then Laurie's family grew up and he got back in with the Lee family. And mm -hmm. Okay, so you, um, you also started going south to uh, Iowa? Yeah, yeah. Tell me some of the stories, like how did you get going down there? Like how did you end up starting to go down for all those competitions and performances? It was back in 1980, I think was the first time I went down there. And the year before, a group was playing at Carmen Fair. Uh -huh that had played down there they were from that part of the country and they played there every year and they, we got jamming afterwards and I yodel a bit. I said, you should come down to Aboka, Iowa. I said, you'd have a ball there. It's all old time music, no drums, no electric instruments. Everything was contest down there, singing contest, yodeling contest, banjo clicking, guitar playing. Mm -hmm. Everything was a contest, storytelling. Mm -hmm. That's where you would have fit in. <laughs> so anyway, I said to Marge, well, let's go down and see what this is all about. So we went down. <clears throat> Never been that far south in my life before. That wasn't that far, just uh, Iowa. But mm -hmm. we drove into the grounds. And I, honest to goodness, I, I thought if this isn't heaven, it'll sure do like <laughs> get to the real place. There was uh, guys picking and singing and yodeling all over the grounds. Right about on. 50,000 people went through there in the course of, uh, well, about four days, I guess. And you competed? Yeah. And? Well, what? I was, I uh, did the wrong thing. I got sitting under a great big trees. I don't know what they were, cottonwoods or something. And I was playing the guitar and singing a bit. And the crowd started to gather around, and honest to heavens, we had about two or three hundred people gathered around, no microphones around. And I, I overheard one fellow say, well, I know who that is. That's Montana Slim. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. So I sang there till about three o'clock in the morning, went to bed, and to get up next morning, I could hardly talk. <laughs> and that's when you were supposed to sing? Compete, yeah. Oh! So did you do okay? Well, uh, I did for, a, I won the yodeling contest. What did you play? What did you yodel? I don't recall now. Probably one of my own songs. And I won the folk singing, Woody Guthrie folk singing contest also. And there was a country singer contest. I, I fell down on that one. By that time, I could hardly squaw squawk out of <laughs> what, what What's your favorite, of all of your yodeling songs, what's your favorite one? I'm going to ask you to sing it next. I don't know if I have a favorite. I like, I like good yodeling songs. I always like Wilf Carter's Swiss Moonlight Lullaby. That well, why don't you play that one? I think I'll play it. Cool. I'll try to play it. Yeah. It was a lot easier back when I was about 33 instead of 83. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Trolling along in the moonlight, I found a stream. 